explore something as big as a storm brewing on the horizon, or as small as a piece of ore buried deep underground. The sooner people receive accurate weather warnings, the better they can protect themselves from harm. Please tell me about yourself. I'm Tian Tzu, Chief Scientist in Artificial Intelligence at Huawei Cloud. After graduating from the Department of Electronic Engineering at Tsinghua University, I moved to the University of Texas in San Antonio and served as a faculty member at the Department of Computer Science for around 17 years. I joined Huawei in 2018. So your research has published a paper in Nature Journal about accurate medium um, weather forecasting um, and this is the first time that a wholly authored paper by Chinese has been published in that journal. How do you feel about that? Huawei innovates foundational technologies and allocates human resources and capital for that purpose. I think that's one of Huawei's big achievements, and it's also an achievement for other Chinese tech companies. The Pengu weather model is available on the website of the European Center for Medium Range Weather Forecasts. You can go to that website and see Pengu's daily weather forecast. With regards to the forecast, the European Center has confirmed that in the most important areas of meteorologists, for example, forecast precision, and in particular, the forecasting of extreme weather, the Pangu model has performed superbly and shown huge potential. Can you explain a little bit how you managed to achieve that using uh, the Pangu model? An AI model consists of two parts, training and inference. We trained the model with massive data, including weather forecast data from the last 40 years. Thanks to that training, the AI model became knowledgeable. We model weather forecasting as a sky face prediction problem. In the image recognition field, we have, for example, facial recognition, object recognition, and object classification. For weather forecasting, we call it sky face recognition. It's a representation of relative positions. In our weather model, there are three dimensions, longitude, latitude, and altitude. As a result, every coordinate has a precise physical location. So once the training of uh, Pangu with the weather model was complete and you started testing it, were the results better than what you expected? The meteorology community has always doubted whether AI approaches can outperform traditional numerical methods. Probably for the first time, we improved not only the speed of forecasts, but the precision of forecasts as well. Initially, we also thought that it was going to be a very challenging goal, but in the end, we did it. How does that differ from other models out there? Compared with other large models, just like Mr. Zhang Pingan said, at the Huawei Developer Conference in July. Pangu large models are designed for larger challenges. Pangu models are positioned to solve the practical problems that industries face. Can you give me some other um, industries that the same model could be applied to? One example is the Pangu mine model. We can use the Pangu mine model to detect foreign objects on the main conveyor belts in mines. In the past, mine workers had to go into the mines and spot foreign objects themselves. Now, with our Pangu mine model, more than 99% of normal objects on the conveyor belts can be screened out. Another example is the Pangu railway model. China Railway Jingzhou Group oversees around a thousand freight trains per day. High-speed cameras deployed along the railway lines take photos of the trains for fault detection. Previously, around 4 million photos were taken each day. If they needed to be inspected manually, it would take 260 pairs of eyes. It was a lot of work. Now, the Pangu Railway model can scan the 4 million photos and screen out about 3.8 million of them leaving less than 5% of the photos in need of manual verification. This significantly reduces the workload. One sort of final question. Um, 
You're obviously very experienced in this field and you've studied it for, for many years. What advice would you have for young people coming into this um, domain? Young people are the future. At the moment, the AI field is evolving day by day. There's huge potential. We need a group of people aiming for the stars. We're pinning our hopes on future talent. I'm sure that they'll create many new things that will change the world.